Hi and welcome to my math class. Today we are going to draw parabolas. Now parabola is a new graph that you are introduced to in grade 10. The standard equation is y is equal to ax squared plus q. Now don't get comfortable with my alphabets. Your teacher might use a different alphabet. In the exams they might use a different alphabet. What you should be uh, pay attention to is that a and q are both unknowns. Now, what does a parabola look like? A standard parabola would usually look like this or like this. Now, a good way to remember it is link it to the a. If it's a positive a, it's a happy face. Can you see? Extremely happy little buddy. But if it's a negative a, then it's a sad face. Okay, so negative is sad and positive is happy. What does each thing represent? The Q represents our turning points. So it would usually refer to something on this line. The A represents on how fat or thin I am. What does that mean? Thin graph, wider graph, thin or fat, narrow or wide. That is what that A does to you. But to draw it, there's very specific methods. You don't need to over concern yourself with all these things. What you need to emphasize is how do I draw a parabola? Right, how do we draw a parabola? When we are drawing a parabola, the first thing you need to know, you have to be able to factorize this question. Now this is difference of two squares which you do in grade 9 work under algebraic expressions and then you do it again in grade 10 work under algebraic expressions. So factorizing by difference of two squares should not be something uncommon to you neither should it be something new. Now let's draw the following graph. You, I've got it as y is equal to x squared minus 9 your teacher could have it as f of x is equal to x squared minus 9. You could have had it as g of x is equal to x squared minus 9. The notation they use is just to clarify what we're working with. Sometimes you've got a few graphs, so you must know, okay, f of x is this one, g of x is that one. But the question at the end ultimately is they are referring to y. Now when you start, Number one, you're going to do x-intercept and y-intercept. Now, x-intercept and y-intercept, you are familiar with it because you would have done it in the drawing of straight line graphs. x-intercept means y is equal to 0 and y-intercept means x is equal to 0. Now, let us do the x-intercept and y-intercept of this graph. If I'm doing x-intercept, y is equal to 0. So, I've got x squared minus 9 and when I say y is equal to 0 I am referring to the f of x or g of x so I have 0 is equal to x squared minus 9 now how do you solve for x this is difference of two squares so it's x minus 3 x plus 3 if you are not familiar with how to solve x you have to go under algebraic expressions you have to go under solve x and you have to master this this is under factorizing and then it comes under solve for x. It's a big section. If you are not okay with it, you are going to have a problem throughout your maths career. Now we solve x is equal to 3 and x is equal to minus 3. Okay, so we have x is equal to 3, x is equal to minus 3. What does that mean? That means that your y is 0 and your x is 3. Your y is 0 and your x is minus 3. That is the coordinates that you're going to put on your graph. Now we're going to do y-intercept. Y-intercept means your x is equal to 0. So again, I've got y is equal to x squared minus 9. I'm putting my x as 0. So I got y is equal to 0 squared minus 9. y is equal to minus 9. Now in grade 10, what we found 
is that some learners are lazy to do y-intercept because our y-intercept is most of the time linked to our turning points. But that is a bad habit because in grade 11, your y-intercept is not your turning point. And then you have a problem. So you follow these steps. These are your building blocks for grade 11. Now when you start cheating now and you start cutting out steps, then in grade 11, we have a problem. The next thing you're doing is your turning points. Now your turning points for grade 10 is linked to your Q. So for grade 10, you would always have a 0 and a Q. This is going to change in grade 11. So don't get too happy and comfortable with it, saying, oh, it's always the x-intercept. It's not always the x-intercept. So it is 0 and your Q. In this case, my Q is minus 9. So my coordinates is 0 and minus 9. Now if you looked here at your y-intercept, your coordinates was also 0 and minus 9. That coincident only lasts till the end of grade 10. Then it doesn't last any. Now how do we draw our graph? We have the following coordinates. 0 and minus 3, 0 and 3, and then minus 9 and 0, and you've got minus, and, minus 9 and 0 repeated twice. But there's something else. You have that it is a positive A. You see there's a positive 1 there. So if it is a positive A, I know I'm very happy. So 0 and minus 3 is about there. And then we've got 0 and 3. And then we've got minus 9 and 0. And our turning point was minus 9 and 0. So on minus 9 and 0, I'm putting my happy face. There's my happy face. Now I'm joining the dots. And that is your parabola. Now what you need to do is you need to tell me, listen, this is minus 9 and 0. This here is 3 and 0. This is minus 3 and 0. These coordinates in grade 10, they're not going to bug you. They're not going to tell you, hey, you need to put in the coordinates. In grade 12, if you don't put it, you lose a mark. So if you start getting these good habits in you already, then you're already securing a good few marks in grade 12. So when you're drawing the graph, you need to put in your coordinates all the time. Let's do the following example. I got f of x is equal to minus 4x squared plus 4, which means y is equal to minus 4x squared plus 4. First thing, x intercept. y is equal to 0. So where y is, I'm putting a 0. So I've got 0 is equal to minus 4x squared plus 4. Remember this is difference of two squares. The difference of two squares would have looked like this. And you are allowed to swap it. What would our difference of two squares be? 2 minus 2x and 2 plus 2x is equal to 0. Had you taken out a common 4, you would still end up with the same answer. Because look at what we have. 2 minus 2x is equal to 0. And if you solve, 2x is equal to 2. x is equal to 1. This one here, 2 plus 2x is equal to 0. 2x is equal to minus 2. x is equal to minus 1. What is our coordinates? 1 and 0 minus 1 and 0. Now, just for interest sake, if you had done the following. 0 is equal to minus 4x squared plus 4. And you took out a common negative 4. Why negative? Because that troubles you. So you end up with x squared minus 1. You'd have minus 4x minus 1, x plus 1. And if you're solving, you have x minus 1 is equal to 0, x plus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 1. Look at the answers. They're exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which method you choose. Any of your factorizing and solve for x methods would work in this, in this equation. So whichever way you're comfortable with, you go with that. Then y-intercept, 
y-intercept means x is equal to 0. So if I substitute here, I'd have y is equal to minus 4 into 0 squared plus 4, which gives me y is equal to 4. Now this rule, again, a lot of children try to leave it out. And in grade 10, it really it won't affect you. But the repercussions come later. So I'm emphasizing again, don't just leave out these rules. Now what is our turning points? Our turning points is 0 and Q. Now what is our Q? Look. It's 4. So our turning points is 0 and 4. Let us draw the graph. When you're drawing your Cartesian plane, remember this point is 0. Then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. On your right is the positive numbers. On your left is the negative numbers. Be careful. I've seen children that start with minus 10, minus 9, minus 8. That's incorrect. It's like a number line. The number line you learned in grade 4, in grade 5, in grade 6. Now for the y value, the top is positive and the bottom is negative. How do we plot? Usually when you are drawing, remember you have to use a scale. So if you're using one centimeter here, all of them have to be one centimeter. Right. So you can't say like, hey, I feel like making between zero and one, one centimeter and between one and two, half a centimeter. So you must use a scale. Now, how do we plot it? One and zero. Minus one and zero. So one and zero minus 1 and 0. Then we've got 0 and 4. We know that it is a negative A, which means it's a sad face. So here's our sad face. And then it's a matter of joining the dots. And you've got your graph. Thank you for watching.